Well, we talked about that overall inflation rate coming in lower in June. However, Canadians aren't seeing relief at grocery stores. Grocery prices increased over 9% in June. But... In the U.S., grocery prices increased just 4.7% over the same period. So what gives? Let's bring in Mohamed Yagi, Agricultural and Climate Policy Lead at the RBC Climate Action Institute. Mohamed, thanks so much for making time for us today. Thank you so much for having me. So why are we seeing uh, this divergence happening? I, yes, grocery prices continue to climb in the U.S., but it seems as though we're outpacing them here. W what's behind it? To, to an extent, this is still the after effect of the COVID-19 pandemic uh, and the Russian invasion of Ukraine that increased prices for agricultural inputs and disrupted various stages of the supply chain. However, in Canada, weather is a major contributing factor to the increase in price. Uh, when looking at the supply chain, the supply uh, has been heavily interrupted because of erratic weather patterns in Canada. Uh, however, we, when we also look at Canada's supply chain, it's also highly dependent on, uni on the United States. Uh, processed foods is Canada's number one agricultural import from the U.S., which accounts for 61% of U.S. total agricultural exports to Canada. Uh, and for, for instance, uh, more than 75% of Canada's fresh vegetables were imported from the U.S. And it should be noted, while Canada produces a lot of food, most of a lot of food from Canada is processed in the U.S. and then sent back to Canada. So it, does that mean that, you know, you're adding in an extra layer of cost there with, with transportation? Absolutely. Consumers not only have to cover the production costs, but the transportation costs as well. And this applies to a lot of other commodities apart from vegetables. When we look at beef, hog production is also included. In addition to that, when we look at the impact of exchange rates, uh, there's the higher import prices are exacerbated by a weaker dollar as well. The Canadian dollar. So, so in terms of you know yes. trying to have that pur purchasing power um, globally for those those imports, then it's it's costing us more on that component too. Absolutely. Okay. So, I mean, in terms of supply chain, um, you know, issues, the extreme weather or weather events that we're seeing in Canada are, are is the U.S. I mean, they're also dealing with uh, extreme weather as well. Um, so. I don't know. It, it's just more so here than there. Well, there's a bunch of there's a multiple factors to it. Uh, the port strait in Vancouver definitely didn't help. Yeah. Uh, but when we look at when we look at input costs as well in in, in Canada, uh, it's increased by thirty percent since Q one of twenty twenty. Uh, that's contributing to an increase in prices. Uh, reduced supply of crops because of erratic weather in Canada is also driving up costs. Uh, we see some municipalities in Saskatchewan declaring agricultural disasters because of droughts. And many farmers are saying it's the worst drought they've seen in generations. Uh, and it, this is not only happening in Saskatchewan, it's happening in southern parts of, of Alberta as well, uh, where some producers are being forced to abandon their crops and selling off livestock because of a lack of accessible water and feed. Are there any factors here that would be pushing up Canadian um, grocery prices that would be controllable? I mean, the weather is out of our hands. Uh, I mean, labor yeah. unrest is, is also, but are, are there factors that could be controlled? Well, what we, as you said, like weather is out of our control, but what we can, what can be done is getting the fundamentals right and creating a more resilient supply chain. Uh, for instance, we can we ensure farmers are getting the right access to financing to help them increase their soil health so that farmland is more resilient to more erratic weather? Are we helping food processors get access to automation to help with labor crunches? Uh, is data from the federal government helping decision makers on best evaluating freight and cargo uh, across the country? Uh, we need to ensure our supply chains are resilient to future weather and geopolitical conditions so consumers don't have to experience these price increases in the future. Do you think that they will, though? I mean, if, if some of that action isn't taken, how, how optimistic are you that there you know, are being uh, steps taken towards some of those goals? 
Right now, from what we hear, there are some steps being taken towards those goals. But if we can ensure that we're helping reward producers, not only for what they produce, but for what they can serve as well, our agricultural sector will be far more resilient than it is today. Uh, and this is not only with producers on the ground on the farm level, it's also looking at the whole ag supply chain and ensuring that the entire supply chain is resilient to future stressors. Do you think that we'll continue to see uh, in the short term grocery prices uh, go up in Canada? In the short term, there will definitely be, it will be at the, sa at the same level. Uh, but if government intervention, businesses can collaborate together, we can ensure that this is not only, uh, this is an opportunity for the country to increase our exports as well.